Welcome to another Q&A video. As you probably noticed in the email, there's no art update this week. Why is that? Well, I went on vacation and I didn't really draw that much. I went camping and I have the poison ivy all over my hands to prove it. And I have goo on my hands to, to help the poison ivy and it gets on the paper. And so I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna take a couple days off from drawing. So with that sad and pathetic excuse out of the way, let's get on to the questions. The first question I have here is from Cass. The question is, the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro in all shapes and sizes seems to be out of stock in the US and Australian stores. Could this be an indication that the new Mobile Studio Pro might be coming out soon? And the answer is yes. In fact, they just unveiled the 16 inch version uh, at the beginning of this week. Uh, it's funny because he wrote this email like last week before Wacom would have announced something. So good on you, man. And they're going to be releasing the 13 in a couple weeks from now. Here's the thing. I don't think they're going to be releasing various tiered models. I think they're just releasing like super high end versions of the Mobile Studio Pro for people who want a lot of power. So the, the bad news here is I think we're only going to get really expensive ones because the one that I have behind me over here is $3,500. Yes, for a for a Mobile Studio Pro, it's a lot of money. So uh, if I hear anything about lower tiered versions of it that are a little more inexpensive, I'll let you know. This question is from Muscan. The first question they have is, does the Apple Pencil have pressure sensitivity? Yes, it does. And it's really good. I'm not sure how many levels Apple doesn't disclose that, but it's really good and really responsive. And the second part of her question is, I've also looked at reviews of the Intuos Pro Medium and Paper Edition, and those reviews were not so good. And I haven't seen many artists go into that territory. Is there a reason for that? So with the Intuos things, part of the part of what's going on there is they're very expensive and you have to get used to drawing on them. I think I reviewed the Intuos Medium and I, I thought it was a pretty good device, but at that price range, you can get a fairly inexpensive screen tablet, which is much, much easier to get used to and much easier to control for a lot of people. Some folks like the pen tablet. Some folks prefer to draw on the screen. I'm a screen drawer myself. So I think that's part of the reason why they don't get really great reviews. It's not that they're bad products. It's that they're expensive. And for that price, you can get something that's easier to acclimate to. The next question is, is I just bought a Wacom tablet, but I noticed it sometimes takes a second or two for the line to catch up with the pen's movement. Is there a setting I can adjust somewhere or is this just something that comes with buying a cheaper tablet? I am running on a fairly new MacBook Pro. So it depends on the drawing program you're using. If you're using Photoshop, which tends to have really laggy brushes, the more complicated your brush is, the more lag that you're going to get with that brush. If you're using something else, it's harder to tell. Usually brush lag comes from the program you're using and the computer you're using and less from the tablet itself. Um, there are ways to speed up Photoshop if that's what you're using and that's what you're experiencing the slowdown in. Uh, I would Google how to speed up Photoshop brushes or, or something of that effect. That's probably gonna help you out. I know there are settings in Photoshop that you can optimize. For example, turning rulers off for whatever reason really speeds up your brushes. There's other settings you can jump in there and adjust in Photoshop that are gonna improve your brush performance as well. Uh, you're probably gonna have to dig a little bit. I'll try to throw a link down below into a video that I found that might help you out. This question is from Nikki and the question is, as I have moved on from the Adobe apps and I'm using Affinity Designer now and I'm having trouble coloring my line work, any tips on this? So so I haven't used Affinity Designer much for coloring line work, at least the way I would in Photoshop because I tend to use Affinity Designer for, for the vector shapes and things like that. Uh, so unfortunately, I don't have a really good uh, answer for you, um, but that sounds like it might be something worth digging into and doing a small tutorial on sometime in the future. Uh, I'll let you know. Also, I have Nikki's Instagram account, so I'm gonna link that down below in the description. Ooh, this is nice work. This question is from Evan. The question is, I've been using the Wacom, Intu Wacom Intuos for a while now. I think I'm ready to jump to the world of on-screen displays. I'm thinking about the Canvas Pro 16, and I wanna know, am I going to miss some of Wacom's tech going to a Huion display? This is a hard question to answer because some people are like hardcore Wacom fans and they swear by it. And I respect those opinion and, and understand why. But generally, I think like Huion and XP Pen, especially their new 16 inch uh, pen display models are really, really good. And they're gonna get you like 90% of the way to where Wacom is. So I, my general feeling is yeah, it's good enough. And I think most people, like 90% of the illustrators of the world, 
aren't going to really miss the differences there. Uh, the people who really, really like love Wacom are going to kind of know it. So I would say, especially since you're going from an Intuos to your first pen display, you're probably not going to notice a lot of that stuff and a lot of the differences there and little subtle things. Okay, so this question's from Edward. It's a little long. Let me see if I can condense it a little bit. So Edward is using an Apple Pencil and an iPad using Procreate, and, and he likes it, but he is also using uh, Procreate Pocket on his phone, and he has an Adenit stylus, and he's noticed that the stylus isn't as accurate. He just doesn't like using that stylus, and he's wondering if the stylus is broken. And, and and if he should send away for a new one. And unfortunately, your stylus probably is not broken. Uh, if you're used to using an Apple Pencil, it is a huge step down to literally any other stylus out there. The, the accuracy is not as good, all that stuff. And the main reason is the Apple Pencil is working in conjunction with sensors underneath the screen of the iPad. What the Adenit stylus is trying to do is it's trying to use Bluetooth to kind of fake that sort of thing, to fake that pressure sensitivity, to fake that accuracy, and it's just never going to nail it. Unless there were sensors in the phone that will allow an Apple Pencil or some other stylus to work with it, it's always gonna be kind of using a workaround and you're gonna notice that delay and you're gonna notice that inaccuracy. And uh, next week we have an Apple press conference, maybe we'll get an Apple Pencil for the iPhone, I, I doubt it. Um, but until Apple does something like that for the phone specifically, uh, the styluses just aren't going to be that good. The next question is from Meredith, and the question is, how do I get these brushes into Procreate? Uh, I sent out some of my brushes. I'll link down below, so if you want to go directly to my website page where I have my brushes, um, they are in a zip format. So what you need to do is you need to save those to your iPad. So if you're on your iPad you can save that zip file to your file folder. And then you need an application in order to unzip that file. And then once it's unzipped, you can just double tap on those brushes and Procreate will know what to do with them. Uh, so you will need a separate zip app to do that. Here's the good news. If, you, if you're willing to wait a few weeks, Apple has added the ability to unzip a file directly into the iPad and the new operating system. So pretty soon that won't be a problem. It's gonna be much easier to use an iPad to unzip files. This question is from Kwandu. The question is, how did you start using Adobe Animate? Because I've seen some of your videos on YouTube and I found it a bit complicated. And yes, I will agree. Adobe Animate is a little confusing to use at first because you're dealing with a lot of symbols and it's about tweening symbols and using motion and stuff like that, um, as opposed to frame by frame animation, which you can do, but it's, it's kind of built to be using these symbols and some of the power in those symbols. And uh, Adobe Animate's brushes at this point in time really aren't that complicated com or, or advanced compared to some other programs. So Adobe Animate can be kind of hard to use. In terms of how I learned it, I was using it back when it was called Adobe Flash. And I used to be a web designer. And so when I started, like in the early 2000s, I was designing banner ads and websites in Flash. It was... It was horrible. I'm glad those days are over. And the last question is from Fatima. The question is, is that, uh, is it possible? This is a question about the brushes email I sent out with my free brushes in it. Uh, is it possible to follow along with the tutorials I'm going to be making, even if you don't purchase the brush pack for now? I'm going to try to make that possible. So I'm going to try to say, hey, these are the brushes that are included in Procreate, and this is how I use them, and this is what some of the more advanced brushes will give you and some of the techniques. So that's the goal right now, is to make it easy for anybody to follow along with those tutorials. And the first one um, I'm shooting to have for next week. So... This week I'll have like my Q&A, art, email, and next week I'll have a tutorial email. So look forward to that. And that's it. Those are the questions for today. If you have a question, just reply to the email that sent you here. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in a couple of days.